Our village is called Fititsiki, which means the sand that sticks to the skin. It is one of the main Vez villages on the southwestern coast of Madagascar. We do a little cattle raising, like our neighbors, the Mascour, but for our people, the sea is all that really counts. Not only does it feed us, but it has allowed us, throughout our history, to escape from our enemies in our little boats, our pirogues. We use our pirogues to sail along the coast to the places where we fish, although we usually fish on foot in the areas of the reef, which rise up during the very high tides of the full moon, about one week every month. Thus, we never disturb the masters of the sea. Today is the eve of one of the biggest fishing periods of the year, the autumn equinox. For four days, the Fititsiki Lagoon is almost entirely at low tide. This is the time when whole families return to the village to fish with us. It's the end of the great annual migration which takes us along the coast in search of good places to fish. We call our guests the Lungus, our allies. A part of the village to the south is always reserved for them. We are all happy to get together again. We haven't seen each other since the last equinox, six months ago. This is Lorake. He's eight years old, and tomorrow he'll go fishing for the first time. Jinga, his father, has given him the job of repairing the sail. His mother, Fina, is pregnant. She won't go fishing on the reef, and it's up to Lorake to replace her. For the four days of the equinox tides, each family must catch enough fish to survive the rainy season, when it becomes too dangerous to take our pirogues out to sea. Lorake knows his father is counting on him. This morning, about 200 pirogues left the village. Everyone seemed happy to participate in the big race, which takes us to the reef. For each one of us, it's a chance to show our sailing ability. Jinga told his son that they would fish very far out, beyond the horizon. From there, you can't even see the dunes surrounding our village. Loraki is a little worried because for us, the Vez, 
The open sea is an unknown world with lots of danger and mystery. Loraki's job is to take care of the sail, the lai sik, while his father indicates the direction with his paddle. We use our poles and our spears as a mast. At last we reach the heart of the lagoon. The sound of the waves breaking on the reef is incredible. We are on what the Vez call the belly of the reef. For Loraki, it's like the end of the world. During the equinox tides, the reef is a trap for fish, surprised by the sudden drop in the water level. Jinga has spotted a karang. Since he was the first one to say anything, it means that it belongs to him. Vez tradition says that whoever sees an animal first is automatically its owner. But if he's wrong, and it's a different kind of fish, he will lose this privilege. The Karang has escaped to the open sea. We'll never catch it now. Usually, the women fish on foot, gathering octopus, algae, and shellfish, while the men stay in the boats and capture trapped fish with the help of their nets. We are looking for octopus, which is one of our favorite foods. Jinga has taught Loraki how to spot the deep holes where they use their tentacles to hide shellfish from predators with pieces of coral. We use two kinds of spears, or voulous. One has a hook for catching the octopus, and the other a straight piece of iron for spearing it once it is out of the water. Jinga, one of the best fishermen in the village, comes to help his son.
Loraki's mother stayed behind to fish in the mangrove. It's not as hard as fishing on the reef. The women fish here for crabs and shrimp that live buried in the mud. The women also gather shellfish. We use some of them to weigh down our nets and others to make conches, which we use to sound a danger warning or to celebrate or to invoke the wind when we're stuck in still waters. tide is rising already. Soon the sea will engulf the reef again. Loraki's feet hurt because the coral is really sharp. But he doesn't dare go back to the village without having caught any octopus. He spots one hiding in the coral. The water is high already and the octopus can easily escape. But Loraki has learned what to do. He's a fat octopus, and Loraki knows that his father will be proud of him. He has to hurry back to the pirogue. The current is already very strong. Loraki goes back to his station on the boat. The other pirogues, which were spread out all over the reef for fishing, are now grouped together along the reef where the channel is deepest. The first sails have already been raised. Everyone hurries so as to get a good spot for the race that will take us back to the village. <laughs> Back in the village, the octopus are hung out to dry. We'll eat some of them, and the others will be sold to foreign merchants who will sell them somewhere far, far away in Asia or in Europe. 
countries Loraki can't even imagine, places he's sure he will never see. It's time to rest now. Fina is preparing a heavy meal because as soon as it gets dark, they will go out to sea again. Jinga makes the torches for night fishing. He went to the Mikkea forest to look for resinous wood. First he chops it into thin pieces so that it burns better. Then he ties them all together with vines made of baobab tree bark. Women and children don't usually fish at night because that's when they say the evil spirits and the lagoon monsters come out. There's an enormous snake that swims on the sea and makes waves that are so big they can break a pirogue. To conquer our fear, we stay together and never stop paddling. We were careful to choose a deserted part of the lagoon. Our neighbors, the Masikur, often come on foot from the coast to fish at night in the lagoon. They take advantage of the darkness to poison the water holes using euphorb tree resin. We don't want to fish with them. The sea has always been good to us and we refuse to poison it. Night fishing is often easier, since the fish living on the reef come out to eat. We gather sea cucumbers especially, which are sold for a good price to Asian collectors.
Fina asked Loraki to keep an eye on his father. She's worried because she's afraid he'll fall under the spell of an Ampella Manasina, a sort of mermaid who comes out at night to attract men and to kidnap them. Lorake has spotted an octopus that doesn't look like any of the others. His father tells him to let it go because it's called an octopus of the dead. It's not good to eat either. The autumn equinox fishing is over. In a few days, we've caught enough to eat and to sell during all of the rainy season. We can rest now. The nomads begin to leave the village and return to their encampments. Some will sell their fish to the Indian merchants of Tulear or Morombe. We'll see them again in six months for the spring equinox. Loraki's grandfather is happy. He's proud of his grandson, who is now a true Vez fisherman. He's respected the sea, and the sea gave him its riches in return. That is how we have always fished. Today there are foreigners who want to teach us to fish differently. They supply us with nylon lines, masks and spears, which enable us to reach the deep water and to fish more and longer, with the risk of destroying the balance that the tides impose on us. One day, there may be no fish left at all. That is why we must never offend the masters of the sea. It is in this way and only in this way that we will be able to live in harmony with the water and preserve our fishing tradition and our culture our Vez culture. <laughs> 